you could die at any time with this. You've got to get a new heart. And they threw her in an ambulance, rushed her down to Iowa City, which is where they have the big, huge um, University of Iowa Medical Center, which is, you know, like our major medical thing in, in uh, Iowa. And they put her number one on the list for heart transplant in the state of Iowa. Well, we prayed about it. We really sought God. And we felt him saying, no, don't do it. And so we called the cardiac surgeon. And, and you'd have to know my wife to know how she did this. But she said, she says so sweetly, she says, you know, Yeshua appeared to me. And he says, your heart belongs to me. And I live in that heart. And I don't want you to remove it. And I am going to hold that heart together in my hands for as long as I want to do it. And so she says, I don't need your new heart. I've got a perfectly good one already. And he just went ballistic. I mean, you know, he was so mad he was stuttering. You know, it was like, you know, there went his new Ferrari or whatever. And anyhow, you know, and I, I don't mean to make fun of doctors, but, you know, some of them do seem like their their eye is more on the bottom line than it is on, on the patient. So anyhow, my wife signed herself out, AMA, as they say, against medical advice, and went home, and they said, you won't even survive a week. And uh, this was, again, in August of 2000. And she did have to take cardiac medicine. She's on, on four separate drugs for that. But the funny thing is, is she didn't die in a week. She didn't die in a month. And, you know, she had two more episodes where she had to go back in the hospital. But right the last time we had her, her echo done, her heart rate is up to 38%, her ejection fraction. Now, imagine that's, that's a pretty spectacular difference, is it not? And, and you know, I just want to, you know, praise God for that because that's a miracle. And the reason she wanted to share that is that I now believe, having studied all this stuff, that the mysterious thing that hit her that night was probably a scalar attack. And, you know, she says, well, why me? Why us, you know? Uh, and, and she even joked they were probably trying to hit you and they missed, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I said, well, you know, we do have a lot of people mad at us, amen. You know, we got the Mormons mad at us, the Masons mad at us, the Satanists mad at us, and, you know, the, you know everybody but the Jehovah Witnesses are mad at us. You know, now after this we'll have the Russians mad at us, amen. So, you know, we don't know why it happened, but I wanted to share that. Because even though this stuff sounds very scary, I want you to understand that, that hell has no hurt that heaven cannot heal. And that, that even though it seems as though this, this kind of thing, what's the defense against this? Well, there's only one defense. And that's if you wear the armor of God. That's if you, if you walk close to Yeshua and stay under the covering of the blood. Ultimately, there's only one answer. Yeshua said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And of course, Paul said, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now, when you see the word repent, and that was the first word out of the mouth of both John the Baptist and Yeshua. Did you know that? was repent. In Hebrew, that word is teshuva, and it means to turn back, to go back, to your Creator, from living a sinful life. And we individually and as a nation both have to repent. Because I think many of you would agree that right now our nation is farther from the Almighty than it's ever been in its 200-year history or more. Because we're, we're, you know, we've just, we have so many things wrong, I don't need to go into them, we've thrown out the Ten Commandments, we have gay marriage, we have abortion, we have all manner of ungodliness. And most of the people don't even seem to care. Now, now here's the thing. If you're not a believer and you're, you're hearing this tonight, you need to get born again and come under the protection of Yeshua the Messiah. Because, believe me, you know, this isn't about being in a church or something. That's not going to protect you. Or being a good guy or a good girl is not going to protect you. You need Yeshua. If you're a believer, then you need to really get serious about your walk. Because I read something right as I was preparing for this tour and it just smote my heart. A recent survey indicates that there's virtually no difference anymore 
and this is, of course, broadly speaking, like all surveys, between the church and the world. There's the same number of, of abortions, divorces, uh, child abuse, addiction to drugs, addiction to porn, you know, whatever it might be in the typical, you know, church as there is in the world out there. It's like we're interchangeable. You know, we're supposed to be a light to the world, and yet our light is growing dim. That's what I mean when I say you need to get serious about your walk. You need to stop playing games. Now, if you're listening to me and you aren't sure about your eternal destiny, you need to get born again. You need to accept Christ as your Savior. And here's what you do. It's not difficult. You have to admit to Yahweh God that you're a sinner. You need to repent and turn away from those sins and ask Him to help you stay that way ask Yeshua to save you from your sins, confess that He died on the cross and rose from the dead. And then you have to ask Him to be the master of your entire life and live like it. Okay, now that you're born again, we're not saved by doing good works. Understand this. We're saved by faith. That's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. But we are saved to do good works. That's the problem. So many Christians nowadays of whatever stripe. Just think, well, glory to God, I'm saved, hallelujah. And then they kind of just go on with their life and forget about, you know, the fact that Yeshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That way our light will shine before others so that we're a good witness to other people. And finally, we must also confess Yeshua before others. You know, because there's going to come a time when if you, if you do not deny Christ, you're going to be killed. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be next year. I don't know if it's going to be next decade. Nobody knows for sure, but I think it's very close myself. And, you know, if you aren't willing to confess Christ now as your Lord and Savior, what are you going to do when your life depends upon denying Him? Are you really going to have the strength to do that? The only way to survive the disasters that Scripture says is coming on the earth is to remain faithful to Yeshua and His Word. And, you know, as I was preparing for this, this one verse out of Psalm 56 came to me. It says in verse 4, In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. In other words, I will not fear what human beings can do to me. If you're really trusting in the Almighty, you should have no fear of this kind of thing. You know, remember, I heard a preacher say once, The more you fear God, the less you fear men. The more you fear men, the less you fear God. So if you really have the fear of God in your heart, you will not fear what's coming in terms of these kind of things. Yeshua is coming for a called out bride. That's us, which is without spot or wrinkle. And we can only achieve that by clinging closely to Him and daily seeking His help to stay free from the sins and blemishes of this world system. And let me tell you, folks, This is the only spot remover out there. Amen? Very, very important. Because let's face it, right now we live in an X-rated world. And it's real hard to stay pure. And the only way you can stay pure is to just cling to the feet of the Messiah. And just like the old hymn says, turn your eyes on Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. The Bible tells us that those who endure in faithfulness to the end shall be saved. Ultimately, our only protection against destruction is staying as close as possible to our Master Yeshua. We may or may not survive physically, because please understand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying if you get born again, or if you are a Christian, all of a sudden you really turn your life around and get serious that it's like a bulletproof shield is going to go up, and you'll be perfectly immune from every attack. Because no, that's not the case. We know... If you read, you know, some of the documents out there that that every year 150,000 Christians are martyred, give or take a few thousand, all over the world for their faith. You know, not so much here in America, but in other countries. So we may or may not survive physically, but we know that we will survive in the glory if we trust in Him. It says in Revelations 2.7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And that's what I'm talking about here, folks. 
The only answer 